Hello. In, in this talk, we're going to look at crossings on the West Somerset Railway, i.e. places where public either foot crossing, farm traffic or road traffic can cross the West Somerset Railway. There are a number of different types and we're going to work from the simple up to the more complex. So we're going to start with farm crossings and footpath crossings. Then we're going to look move on to road crossings. And we have one completely open crossing, we have three automatic open crossings, we do then have two gated crossings at stations, and then finally we have a barrier crossing at Minehead. And after we've looked at that, we'll think a little bit about the future, because that's going to change before too long. So let's start with farm crossings, which are also sometimes called occupation crossings or accommodation crossings. Now why are they there? Well, when our railway was built in the 1860s or the 1870s, it was driven through agricultural land. And of course, landowners might at that point have had land which now found itself on one side or the other side of the railway and wanted to get across. And so part of the process of the parliamentary bill for authorising a railway like ours would be to agree where those crossings were going to be and so you end up with a set of farm gates either side of the railway that the landowner can open at will and move across. Now that is potentially a hazard, but fortunately, of course, those are not public crossings, so they're not available for the general public, and the local landowners don't want their sheep uh, run over by a train. So the responsible local landowners, A, will know when trains are running locally, and B, if they've got something like a flock of sheep to move that are not always perfectly controllable, will generally be in touch with the railway before they make the move. So those are farm crossings, and there are quite a lot of them along the West Somerset Railway. Now we also have some footpath crossings. They arise in a similar way because, of course, before the railway was there, there were public footpaths crossing the land, and the railway wasn't going to extinguish those. They tend to be a bit more carefully gated, so you won't, you won't have a big wide farm gate. You can either have, have a thing called the Kissing Gate, which was a particular favourite of the Great Western Railway, so you have a curved piece of fencing within which a gate swings, and you have to walk into it, pull the gate past you, and then walk out of the other side. And it means that an animal can't do that for itself. So cattle, for example, or sheep, can't get through a kissing gate and get onto the railway in that way. We also have some crossings out along Kerr Moor, and they have stile-type gates, which serve the same function. So people can climb over the stile and then cross the railway, whereas free-running animals can't. Sometimes you get a combination of a farm crossing and a footpath in the same place, and so you might have to open and shut a gate, or indeed have a gate and kissing gates, and we have a crossing like that at a place called Derby's Crossing, just south of Bishop's Lydiard Station. Some of the crossings also have gained entertaining names over the years, and my favourite is a crossing that these days is known as Whiskey Trail Crossing, which is just north of Bishop's Lydiard Station. During the Second World War, a big house to the west of the railway, a place called Sandhill Park, which has now been developed for housing, was a base for American servicemen. And being an American service location, it was dry. Now, the American service authorities might be dry, but American servicemen weren't. And they fancied a walk into the village, into one of the three, I think there were then three pubs in the village, where they could get a drink. And so the crossing became known as Whiskey Trail Crossing. The one open crossing that we have is at Dunster West, just to the west of Dunster Station. The lane here just goes across to some commercial premises, the other side of, of the railway, from the main road, and has incredibly light traffic and the degree of protection that you need to give to a crossing depends on a combination of two things. The number of rail movements, well, 
our numbers are always relatively light relative to the national network and the number of road movements and in this crossing they are so very light that in the early days of the current West Somerset Railway from 1976 when this crossing was looked at it was determined that it was perfectly safe for it to be an entirely open crossing. Before closure by British Railways in 1971 there was a signal box by this crossing which controlled the entry onto the double track to Minehead and this was a gated crossing worked from the signal box so it, it's plainly doesn't have the same level of protection these days but is perfectly acceptable for the level of use that the crossing has. If you're at Dunster that's why drivers whistle particularly enthusiastically before setting off from Dunster or indeed just before arriving. Next we look at AOCLs, automatic, and that stands for Automatic Open Crossing Locally Monitored and we'll, we'll work through what that means. Once again also Dunster Sea Lane Crossing was a gated crossing in the years up to closure by British Railways and had probably the biggest pair of gates I know anywhere in the West Country and they were removed just after the present company took over. Automatic open crossing doesn't have barriers it just has lights so plainly it requires something more than just an open crossing so the traffic is a bit heavier and indeed the traffic down sea lane goes down to a set of holiday chalets and the beach so there is a noticeable traffic but nothing like a busy suburban road for example not at that level and so you have two sets of road lights facing traffic in each direction along comes the train and the train will trigger a track circuit automatic bit in the crossing and will start the crossing working and what then happens is that the road vehicles get uh, seven seconds I think of steady yellow light the lower of the lights on the crossing and then they get flashing red lights and at the same time an audible warble sound as a warning and when that's worked the driver will get a flashing white light on a light that faces to locally monitored by the train crew and he knows therefore that those road lights have worked correctly but our drivers also know of course that this is an open crossing and we get people coming to the West Country from parts of the country that don't understand open crossings particularly well and I'm sure there won't be a West Somerset driver of any length of service who hasn't seen somebody sneak across or indeed either in a car or walk across in front of the train which is very worrying for the driver so if you're watching this video and learning about the West, the West Somerset Railway from it please if there isn't even if there isn't a barrier if the road lights are there do not cross in front of the train because as the train passes by the fact that it comes off the track circuits related to the crossing means that the crossing will shut down now we have those automatic open crossings at Dunster Sea Lane as I've said at Lee Woods and at Roebuck Gate Lee Woods and Roebuck Gate are both between Stagumba and Crocombe stations in a very leafy rural part of the line in all three cases the automatic open crossings replace what were attended crossings years before so there would be a crossing keeper and a hut and some signals to indicate that the crossings were correctly across the road and ready for the train to come by. At Roebuck there was a crossing keeper's cottage which was occupied nearly until the closure of the line in 1971 although I understand for the last year or so this job was covered on the relief by signalmen from Taunton who absolutely hated it because it was for them a very boring job so they had to come down there and just sit and wait for the very occasional trains that there were. Plainly in years gone by when it was your residence you were there the whole time I suspect you had quite a well attended vegetable garden associated with your property. Now we then move up to the first gated crossing and we'll take them in once again in order of operational complexity. Now,
right by Willerton signal box, we have a road crossing across the line. And what we have are two, what look to be very large, heavily built farm gate type gates. A lot of people these days don't realize that this road crossing, in fact, was the A39 until uh, the late Victorian period when the road bridge up ahead was built. So certainly when the railway opened, this was the main road. And has had to serve in that function once or twice since when there have been bridge repairs. Now until the railway was shut by British Railways in 1971, the normal position of these gates was that they were left closed across the road. And if you wanted to come, to you, come and use them, you had to come and ask for the signalman to open them and let you across. When British Railways closed the line in 1971, that was changed, reversed, and they were left normally open to road and are now closed for rail movements by hand. Now they're closed by hand, so when the signalman knows that he's got trains about, either he comes out or some of the station staff are properly trained in shutting the gates and they will shut the gates. They then are bolted by the lever at the farthest south end of the signal box frame at Williton. The brown lever with the cloth hanging on it. And when that lever, lever has been pushed across in the frame, those gates now can't be unlocked by anybody, can't be moved by anybody. And so the signalman can safely pull the signals and let the train over the level crossing. There are also a pair of wicket gates by the side of the large gates at Willerton, which in a way don't make particular sense unless you know that the gates used to be left closed to road. Normally then pedestrians or someone with a dog could just walk walk through the wicket gate and not require the big gate to be opened and all the signalman had to do was lock the wicket gates when there was a train coming. These days they're still there and they're still operated and they do provide a sort of last minute opportunity for people to get across the line before the train is too close. The next step up is Blue Anchor where the gates are worked by a wheel from the signal box any in the, anywhere in the country, they're, they're rare in the country and I believe it's the last set anywhere in the, in the West Country counties. What the signalman does when he's got to the point where he would like to close those gates to road is that the signal box is right on the corner and he's got windows that allow him to look up the road coming from Carhampton and round the corner along the seafront and he will pick a moment when there isn't traffic coming along and rings a pedestrian bell to warn pedestrians that things are about to happen and then if you look in the picture we're just looking at now you can see that there are two brown levers right up by the ship's wheel that's used to move the gates the signalman first unlocks the gates by moving one of those brown levers which drops a pair of quadrants that hold the gates up closed to rail and then he'll wind the gates over with the wheel and then lock them firmly across the road with the other brown lever and just like in Williton when he's done that firstly the gates can't be moved by anybody from outside and secondly he's now his lock interlocking is released and he can pull off the signals that allow movements across the level crossing. Blue Anchor also has a pair of wickets on either side of the gates and they are also locked from the signal box so the signalman can stop people popping out uh, across the level crossing in front of an oncoming train. It's particularly important in the corner by the signal box because as you come through the gate there, if there was an incoming train coming from Minehead, you could step through the gate and be very close to the train. So it's important that those are closed. There's a further wrinkle about the level crossing at Blue Anchor in that number three signal, which is the signal at the Minehead end of the down platform, is so close to the gates that to pull off the previous signal, number two signal, trains into the station coming towards Minehead that the gates have to be closed across the road 
because if the driver overran number three signal, he would run into the gates. So the interlocking requires that the gates are closed to road before number two signal that you can't see off around the corner is cleared to allow the train into the station. What that can mean is if a train is early coming in the towards Minehead direction and the train coming from Minehead is perhaps a little bit late, bemused motorists often see the gates closed to road in rolls a train coming from Bishop's Lydiard and stops in the platform. And then to them inexplicably, the signalman then opens the gates again and lets them go. And they think, why are we stopped? Well, they were stopped to maintain their safety so that if that train, for whatever reason, had not quite stopped in time at the signal, it and they hadn't met on the level crossing. Important thing, safety. Now we then move up a final gear to Minehead. There weren't any level crossings at Minehead until 1990. And in 1990, it was decided to develop the land between Butlins and the outlying buildings of the town. And also to relieve the traffic coming through the town, as particularly on changeover day, summer Saturdays, it was decided to build a road called Seawood Way, which is the road that now runs across the level crossing at Minehead. And it was worked out that the level of use, both of the road and of the railway there, because obviously we, we shunt carriages and things at Minehead with some regularity, required rather more than an open crossing. And the solution that was adopted is a thing called an ABCL, an Automatic Barrier Crossing Locally Monitored. And we'll work through that. So firstly, this is the only crossing on the line with barriers and provides that extra level of protection and indication to a car that it needs to stop on a level crossing. It is also a level crossing that's painted as a yellow box junction. And we do have trouble sometimes on summer Saturdays when the queue into Butlins queues back across the crossing and people forget that they shouldn't be stopping within a yellow box junction. So please, once again, if you're listening to this and you're coming to Minehead, just watch out for that yellow box junction. You are committing a traffic offence if you stop in the yellow box junction without a reasonable prospect of being able to leave it straight away. So how does the crossing work? Well, imagine a train departing from Minehead. So the signalman pulls off the signals for it to leave, the platform starter, and the advanced data farther into the distance to take it into, into the single line section heading towards Blue Anchor. Nothing happens with the crossing. And that's a good idea because the signalman can then pull his signals off 10 minutes before the train leaves. Everybody knows that the train has the signalman's permission to leave. And so we get to departure time. Station duty is complete. Doors closed. Guard blows his whistle. Driver acknowledges. Toot toot and off goes the train. As the train leaves, it runs onto a track circuit, and it's that that initiates the operation of the crossing. Road drivers get a period of a steady yellow light, an audible warning, and then they get flashing red lights as the barriers come down. Here comes the locally monitored once again. And when the barriers are properly down, the driver gets a flashing white light towards him, which means that the crossing has operated successfully and he can carry on across it. And he carries on across the crossing. And once he's got to the other side, the track circuits know that he's clear of the crossing and up come the barriers and the traffic can proceed. It's slightly different in the other direction for an incoming train. The train can get as far as Minehead's inner home, which is the colour light signal that you can see by the level crossing. Two things have to be true before the crossing will now operate. There has to be a train on the track circuit, just the Taunton side of the inner home, and the signalman has to have cleared the signal for one of the routes into the station. At that point, the crossing will operate, go through the yellow light, audible warning, red lights, barriers down sequence, and when that's all occurred, as well as the proceed indication on the colour light signal. On the same post as a colour light signal, there is also a flashing white light. It's lower of the three lights on the colour light head of the signal. 
and that allows the train then to proceed across the crossing and into the station. So that's Minehead's ABCL and actually as a type of crossing it's really quite unusual there aren't many ABCL, ABCLs in, in, in the United Kingdom. Minehead's level crossing is now 30 years old and has come to the time when it needs to be replaced and that's Somerset County Council's responsibility. Studies have been done to look at the amount of road use that there is now, both road traffic and pedestrians and we must recognise that we have Butlins on one side and McDonald's and the supermarkets and the retail part of Minehead on the other and so there is a fair foot traffic as well as road traffic. And it's been decided that on renewal, the crossing needs to be full barriers. And that means that there will be a physical barrier that will stop you either driving or walking across the road before a train is brought across the level crossing. It also means that the signalman will need to watch closely as the barriers come down. He will be pushing a button to bring the barriers down and he will have to tell the system that they are fully down and that he's satisfied that the crossing is clear before he then pulls off any signal to make movements across the level crossing. It's inherently safer because there will be a full barrier across the road and to get in front of a train you'd have to jump that barrier whereas now you only have to walk around it if you're sufficiently foolish to do that. Please don't do that. It do does mean that it is likely that the road closure times will be a little longer than they are at the moment but that's, I don't think it's too much of a penalty for the people of Minehead in the future. That's been an introduction to crossings on the West Somerset Railway. I hope that's useful. I hope you found it interesting. As usual in the Railway Fundamental series, there will be a, some self-test questions put up on the West Somerset Railway Association website. And do have a go at those and see if you've learned something about crossings on the West Somerset Railway.